Hey y'all. All right, we're back with part two of our series. And this one is, I wanna talk about how high protein can be beneficial in the off season or higher protein. So recently, one of the more recent studies that we've done in the lab uh, looked at this exact uh, relationship. So explain the uh, design. The design. So we recruited aspiring female physique athletes only. So mm -hmm. these females had either participated in a physique competition or had a desire to do so within the next year. We recruited them all in the off season, so they weren't dieting, and we basically said, we're going to randomly assign you to one of two groups. One group was given a high amount of protein. The other group was given a low amount of protein. It was at least 2.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body mass in the high group, and the low group got no more than 1.2 grams. So as you can see here, there was a big Kilogram. difference in protein intake between these groups. The only difference between the two groups was one group ate a lot of protein, one group did not eat a lot of protein. Um, as an example, I'm, I'm rounding here, but a 125 pound female would have gotten about 140. 45 grams of protein per day, something like that. Yeah, it's about 1.2. I'm trying to do the math real quick. Um, and my, I'm like, <laughs> I was trying to be like all slick about that. And I'm like, <laughs> trying to do the math. Um, it's a little over, it's about 1.1. Yeah, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. Yeah. 1. 1.1 grams per pound. Per pound, yes. And then it was 0. 0.55. 55. Yeah. For the lower end. <laughs> for all of the stupid Americans, <laughs> the metrics, you can't do the metric system. <laughs> and we had them, so they did that. They tracked their macros every day for eight week period. We had them resistance train four days per week in our lab. Every single set, every single rep was supervised. Lauren actually designed the workouts. We had um, basically a two day upper bodies, two day of lower body. Mm -hmm. And they either had a figure or bikini split yes. depending on which one you wanted. I mean, there were, they were mostly the same, but um, the figure had bench pressing, whereas the bikini didn't. They had a and shoulder the, overhead press substitute. Yeah, they had an overhead press variation, and then the, um, whereas the figure had benching, and then the figure was just more of an all overall balanced look, a little bit more back training, a little bit more quad training, whereas bikini was understandably a little bit more shoulder, glutes, hamstrings, but it was a very well balanced program um, for the most part. So, so what we did was for eight weeks, we followed them, watched them work out. Before the study and after the study, we measured their metabolic rate and their body composition. So we looked at fat, how much fat did they gain or lose, how much muscle mass did they gain or lose. And we actually had intended this study to go on a following semester, but the results were so profound, we stopped the study yes. because the high protein group gained significantly more muscle mass than the lower protein group. They gained four and a half, on average, four and a half pounds of muscle in eight weeks. The lower protein group only gained one and a half pounds of muscle. And one other thing that I just looked at, there were nine, damn impressive. <laughs> nine subjects in the no, eight subjects in the high protein group, every single subject, I don't think you know this, but every single subject gained muscle mass in the high protein group. In the lower protein group, three out of the nine actually lost muscle mass over the so eight-week training. Yes. How many were, people were there in? Uh, 17, I mean, we, okay. we recruited about, well, here's another thing, we recruited about yeah. 40. About 28. Go see our previous video uh, yes, for why we're being, being like this. But yeah, you recruit 40 to finish with... Uh, Half so of that, <laughs> practically. Um, but yeah, some weren't strong enough to get into the study. Other ones couldn't handle the high or low protein. Um, some just dropped out because they couldn't attend that many training sessions. But yeah, it was 17 subjects that finished that we analyzed. And, and every single person in the higher protein group gained, gained. muscle mass. And only a there was a there was a 33 percent chance when you're eating 0.55 grams of protein per kilogram per pound of body mass that you would lose muscle mass even though you're weight training four days per week the other really interesting thing about the study was the high protein group actually ingested a couple hundred calories more every yeah. day wasn't it you know the exact number it was 420 i think yeah it was like 428 or, or, yeah. yeah it was, it was <laughs> We're so nerdy, we totally remember. It was 423.5. Let's just say <laughs> hundreds of more calories every single day. Now, all in the form of protein. Yeah. And they didn't gain. And these are people who send in your diet logs fat. every week. Like, they checked in basically every week 
um, sent in diet logs. So it wasn't just like, oh, I think I ate this much. Like these were people who were dedicated. They had training too on how to track, right? It wasn't that yes, the group they that... all had a personalized nutrition coach. Mm -hmm. and, the, and what they turned in was their macros every single yeah. day. So I it's mean, not it was... like they... Like, even for my study, we didn't have that, it wasn't that sophisticated, you know, like, so we were going yes. on a lot more, like, hope and faith, um, and three-day diet logs, whereas this was every single day, and they had some more coaching on it. The reason we had less coaching on mine was because it would have made one group more biased than the other, because mine was meal plan versus macro, but right. because this was all macro, you could coach people as they needed. Some people knew what they were, some people didn't, and then it kind of worked out that way, but yeah, I remember that, like, 400 extra calories. Now, the only... I guess criticism we have um, that we've talked about is the um, it was in the off season. Yes. So, um, but this is really interesting. So, can this apply to prep? We're not sure. We'll have to do a study. Um, but I do think it has profound effects for the off season. Um, and even if there was an error, you know, with the machines picking up, you know, because you can never know if it's a hundred percent certain, right? Like, obviously. But that's yeah, that's, still, why you, that's why you have that's, 17 subjects. Exactly. That's it's, why you have all the subjects, and the four and a half pounds was the average. It wasn't just like one person. It was a bunch of people. So it could have been wrong that many times, but I think there's definitely some kind of trend there that we can't overlook. That's for certain. And when you say, would this apply to a dieting population, what we can borrow from is the obese, the, the obese population studies where we know that higher protein <laughs> in an obese population yeah. maintains lean body mass. Yeah. We just, we don't, yeah. there's no study yet in. So it only makes sense that it would help. Um, as far as the additional calories, that's kind of where I would question. Um, as far as, the, it would have to be 400 extra calories, but if there are extra calories, should you delegate those to protein or other macronutrients? But again, those are, we don't know those yet. are the nuances, but in any case, in the off season, you're typically looking to add more muscle mass. So. Uh, an easy way to do that is to eat a little bit more protein and uh, to train hard. So I think that that, I mean, that was a, such a cool study. I remember when you, I think you like called me and you told me this stuff. Like I was just like blown away. Oh, I was, with, I was we, excited. I was we like, were super excited. I was more excited that we didn't have to continue the study. I didn't, we didn't have to re do another round of recruitment. Yeah. Um, yeah, usually I remember. You have, to, you have to do that if, um, if there's not enough power. So usually the way you have power in studies is from the amount of subjects. Yes. Correct? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying my stats right. My little eensy beensy stats that I know. <laughs> yeah. The more subjects, the better the design. Yes. Because you, you, if you don't have enough subjects and you say there it's was It's hard no... to pick up a result. Yes. And you say there's no significant differences. Usually it's just because there weren't enough people. So that's why some bad scientists, like we've talked about, will... Um, what's that called? Bootstrapping or whatever. It's a weird word. Yeah. It's like that really awkward word where they're like... Oh, well, if there was a hundred more people, it would have shown this. Well, you don't know if there was, like... Yeah. <laughs> Is if, that what it's if, called, bootstrapping? I think that's the term <laughs> that, yeah, that basically says, let's multiply these three subjects and let's pretend they were 3,000 subjects. Yeah, it's like, okay, you can't, you can't with, really do that. But, yeah, the problem with that is the same variability is carried across the 3,000. I would say just do the work and recruit more subjects. Yes. So don't bootstrap if you're listening to this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that's a really cool practical application. Um, if you're looking to gain muscle in the off-season, as most of us are, it can't hurt to eat a little bit more protein. Uh, specifically in this research design, it was 2.4 grams per kilogram or 1.1 grams per pound, which actually I found is like a sweet spot. Most clients I have around 1 to 1.2 grams per pound. I've found is kind of a good place for satiety also as well as muscle building. So yes. take that into consideration. Um, that's not published yet, right? No, we. I actually have Brad Schoenfeld helping me write okay. that up. So, so we, you know it's going to be good. <laughs> we are close. Um, probably next week. I'm, I'm oh, anticipating sweet. that we submit it. Okay. F to the uh, to the journal that we're that we're targeting for awesome. publication. So that'll mean probably a few months, few weeks. That'll be. Uh... Could mean a few months, or it could mean about a year. Depends, yeah. <laughs> depends on the the review depends process. On the yes. Uh, but in any case, that will be out at some point soon-ish. Uh, everything in science takes a lot longer than you think it should. Uh, so, but I'll definitely let you guys know as soon as that's out, and um, you guys can read it then, hopefully. Thank you so much for watching uh, part two. If you haven't watched part one, definitely go check that out. We talk about why no study is perfect, uh, and then definitely tune in for part three as well.